गुड इवनिंग ऑल आई वेलकम यू ऑल ऑन द बी हाफ ऑफ स्टडी आई एस इंग्लिश माई नेम इज प्रितेश माथुरकर आई विल बी यूर प्राइमरी टूर गाइड आई विल बी यूर फ्रेंड फिलोसोफर एंड टूडे ऑन वर्ड्स वी आर ऑल मार्चिंग विद अवर वर्ल्ड टूर सो वेलकम टू द फर्स्ट सेशन ऑफ दिस इनोवेटिव सीरीज द फर्स्ट सेशन बींग दैट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड टूर अपटिल नाउ विट टुक रफली ट्वेंटी वन सेशन ऑन द बेसिक्स ऑफ दिस डिसिप्लिन वेर इन यू एंड मी ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड the basic concepts of the geophysics the basic concepts with regards to the working of the earth the working of the three spheres of the earth the hydrosphere the lithosphere and the atmosphere so today is the first lecture where you and me are traversing on our journey so today i will be taking on the very first step of the world tour and mind you guys this world tour will be a very innovative one because we will be discussing different aspects of the world and we will be using the most potent tool in geography that is maps so using maps i tend to cover roughly 50 to 60% of your basic gs geography discourse and using this concepts you can even understand the higher level concepts of gs geography and whatever content i will be showcasing you this content will have direct practical applicability in prelims as well as mains so using this content i am covering roughly 15 to 20 marks in prelims and approximately 100 to 200 marks in your mains and if gs paper 3 comes in our purview essay comes then you can very well expand expand this content to be the coverage of around 300 to 400 marks and most importantly i will be interlinking current affairs with the conventional part 2 so on the behalf of the entire team on the behalf of me as your able friend philosopher and guide i welcome you all to this initiative let's begin our world tour from today onwards thank you for bearing with me till this end i know that it was very daunting first 20 lectures first 21 lectures here i say but from today onwards you will start enjoying this journey like anything because we are finally stepping our shoes into the name of this session that is geography through maps so for today i am now using the model country called as new zealand so we will move region by region wise we will move continent by continent wise why i have selected new zealand because new, new zealand can be considered as a very good example of the different topographical features which i have discussed up till now so new zealand one of the simplest country to understand the different aspects of geophysics after new zealand we will gravitate towards the island continent of the world that is australia from that we'll move to south america north america africa europe asia and then lastly we'll do our motherland that is india and believe me trust me india is amalgamation of every damn aspect which we'll study globally so understanding india is not that easy you need to have a well knowledge then only you can understand our motherland that is bharat that is india so welcome all everyone let's begin our journey from today onwards okay i'm little bit excited because uh, it's my passion that i normally have while taking this lectures it's my determination that i want this content to be enriched to be embedded in your blood stream okay so please have patience with me please bear with me i hope and i am confident enough that you will enjoy this sessions okay so as promised to everyone before starting any lecture i am showcasing you one of the most beautiful locations that we have so the first location that i am showcasing you today as a part of the pictorial is a very beautiful point on earth this is the northernmost point of new zealand so today i am venturing into new zealand per se so this is the northernmost point of new zealand that is cape regina you can see on this interactive flat panel how beautiful this point is so the ocean which you are seeing here this is the pacific ocean so on the this side you have pacific ocean and on this side you have tasman sea okay and this is the northernmost point of new zealand wherein you can go you can take very good pictures and you can appreciate the meeting of two water bodies okay on one side you have the great pacific ocean and on one side you have the tasman sea so from today onwards i will be increasingly focusing on showing you pictures i will be increasingly focusing on showing you maps so that you appreciate the aesthetic beauty of earth so that you get what this planet is how beautiful our earth is and basically using this content you get good marks in the discipline okay so let's begin our understanding of new zealand for this now i will be heavily relying on the political and physical maps of the world i will be heavily relying on the 
content with regards to atlas and for this i want each and every one of you to have orient black swan school atlas in your hand so those of you who will be watching my sessions those of you who will be with live with me i expect that each and every one of you has orient black swan school atlas ready with you okay so those of you who are watching or those of you will be watching as per your convenience please keep a map of physical map of new zealand open with you i will be covering all the damn aspects of this country and slowly 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 we will increase our level so that we start from the basic and in the end when we'll do india you will have a bird's eye view of all the different maps of the world and you would have done approximately 50 to 60 percent of your geophysical syllabus okay so let's begin with the first country so i'm beginning with the first country today this being the first session so i'm going country wise why? Because New Zealand is a representative country of some of the geophysical aspects. Hence, I am using this map. Slowly, 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 we will increase our level. Okay. So, the country which I am beginning with you all today, it's a country called as New Zealand. Okay. New Zealand. Okay. And it's a country which is completely in the southern hemisphere. It's a country which is completely in the southern hemisphere. Okay. So right now if you go to New Zealand so you will be having winters why because New Zealand is to the south of equator we are having summers so if you now go to New Zealand it will be having winters okay so if I showcase you New Zealand on a global scale so let me quickly open up the global map too so that you have a bird's eye view of that okay <clears throat> okay so this is our world map okay okay so this is where you have new zealand so the tropic of capricorn cuts australia directly in half so this is our tropic of capricorn passing like this okay and new zealand is to the south of tropic of capricorn okay tropic of capricorn new zealand is to the south of this so the entire country will lie in the southern hemisphere and as it lies in the southern hemisphere so new zealand today will have winters why because we have moved to the south of equator okay so the location of new zealand or the latitudinal extent of new zealand is roughly between is roughly okay i'm not going to the details of it you just need to have a rough estimate so it ranges from approximately 34 degrees south to approximately around 49 to 48 degrees south so this is the approximate latitudinal extent of new zealand so entire country of new zealand is in the southern hemisphere to the south of tropic of capricorn okay now before entering into the details of new zealand i will be quickly discussing with you the way i will be approaching maps the way i will be dealing with this information in a precise manner in a complicated not complicated but in a contented manner okay contented means that whenever mapping is being showcased to you you should feel contented normally what happens guys like those of you who are watching me or those of you who will watch me at a later date normally so much of information is cramped into the mapping sessions that you end up getting confused so i will be dividing this information in a proper format i won't be making this information complicated but in the end you will feel contented with the session that yes now we have covered the location in a proper manner in a way which you can remember see guys for me doing discussing this is very easy because i have gone through these locations a number of times and dare i say have visited new zealand so your guide which you are seeing over here i have traveled more than 46 countries and i have been to new zealand like i have discovered most of the places of new zealand so for me it's just an expression of my experience okay and that is why my passion in teaching you geography because i have actually gone through these locations i know the intricacies i know the cultures of these places hence this is my passion that i am showcasing you you can basically see from my smile how excited i am to showcase you all of this but what is important that you should feel contented with the content so in a precise manner in a contented manner we will be dealing with this so for any of the maps for any of the maps which I will be venturing out into, I will be using five 
classifications i will be using five classification based model so the first thing that i will discuss with any location is the physical aspects please keep this in mind i will discuss the physical aspects and all of the physical aspects physical aspects means water bodies mountains rivers valleys lakes depressions grasslands predominantly i will be discussing from west to east please keep this in mind predominantly all the physical aspects i will be discussing from west to east and i will be following a clockwise direction okay this is my way of approaching things this is my way of making you understand the things it's your prerogative guys that whether you need to remember this in a clockwise manner or anti clockwise manner whether you need to remember this from west to east or east to west normally i tend to prefer the rotation of earth and the clockwise direction okay so that is my way of approaching number 2 after dealing with the physical aspects i will be discussing some of the political aspects political aspects of the location and mind you this political aspects will be heavily interlaced with current affairs so it's not that if i'm discussing politics so i won't be venturing into geopolitics i also be venturing into geopolitics okay so geopolitics will be a major say in my discussions so you will be pretty comfortable with this after this i will be venturing out into the economy part so we will be discussing the economy of that location and lastly fourth i will discuss the society and the history of that place this is very very important society and history of that place why because unless and until you understand the society and history of the place you will not be able to contemplate you will not be able to properly understand what this place holds in the world and what is the future scope of this place of this location in the world okay so society and history so this will be my five fold approach so society and history i can divide into two four and five so i will be discussing the physical aspects i will be discussing the political aspects and there i say more importantly geopolitical aspects after that i will be discussing economy after that i'll be discussing society and little bit tad of history too okay so let's begin with the discussion of new zealand let's begin with the physical aspects of new zealand so as you can see on your screens and as i've already told you that entire country of new zealand lies in the southern hemisphere to the south of tropic of capricorn so two things basically as it lies to the south of tropic of capricorn new zealand will be under the influence of westerly winds those of you who are not comfortable with the westerlies you can revise my previous lectures there i have discussed what are westerly winds so i won't be venturing into that so new zealand will be battered by the westerly winds number 1 and number 2 we did discuss a phenomenon called as orographic nature of the mountains and how it affects the low pole topography so in new zealand we will be showcasing that or we will be discussing that in detail and also we will be discussing the plate tectonics of new zealand so as you can see on your screens new zealand is basically three island country i am again reiterating new zealand is basically three island country of this you have two major islands and you have one minor island okay so the first major island of new zealand this is called as the north island this is called as the north island the second major island of new zealand this is called as the south island so you have north island and you have south island okay <clears throat> so you have north island and you have south island so two major islands of new zealand and the last and the little bit minor island of new zealand but there i say the most beautiful location of new zealand is over here so this is called as stewart island this is called as stewart island okay so new zealand is basically a three island country you have one north island you have another south island two major islands and last but not the least you have the southernmost island this is called as stewart island okay so any discussion of new zealand will be primarily concerned with the island which we are discussing if i'm considering north island so north island's features are different if i'm considering south island south island features are different and the stewart island it's a completely different territory we will be venturing into that too so please remember the reason why new zealand is grouped into three islands two major and one minor okay 
So before venturing out into the physical aspects, let us quickly discuss the plate tectonics or the area with regards to where the region is active and where the region is not active with regards to plate tectonics. So those of you who are not aware with regards to plate tectonics, you can refer to my previous discussions with regards to plate tectonics and those of you who are continuing with me, you will be very easily able to grasp it. So if you see the plate movements in and around New Zealand, so New Zealand marks the subduction zone of Pacific plate beneath the Australian plate. So if I'm drawing the plate boundary for you, so the plate boundaries are like this. Okay. So you have a subduction zone to the east of North Island like this. So this is a subduction zone. I'm marking it with arrows. Okay. So this is the subduction zone. And then you have a kind of transform boundary of the Australian plate and Pacific plate. And after that, to the southeast of the South Island, again, you have a subduction zone. So this is the subduction zone. This is the subduction zone. Okay, subduction of which plate? Of Pacific plate, of Pacific plate underneath the Australian plate. Underneath the Australian plate. Okay, underneath the Australian plate. And the subduction zone is to the east of North Island. Okay, so here the Pacific plate, the mighty Pacific plate is subducting underneath the Australian plate. And mind you, whenever you will have subduction, so it will be associated with volcanism, it will be associated with seismicity. And as you have subduction zone to the east of North Island, the North Island becomes more tectonic. However, what is happening in the Southern Island when this plate boundary is venturing into the Southern Island like this. So here the boundary is transform boundary. It's not a convergent boundary. So this part of New Zealand does have convergent boundary. This part of New Zealand does have convergent boundary. Whereas the southern island of New Zealand, the boundary is primarily transform boundary. So the Australian plate and the Pacific plate are basically just slipping past one another. And because of this, you have a fault being created over here. And the name of this fault is Alpine fault. The name of this fault is Alpine fault. The name of the fault is Alpine fault. Please get this very, very properly. So tectonically speaking, the North Island of New Zealand is tectonically more active. The North Island of New Zealand is tectonically more active. Why? Because you have subduction of the Pacific plate underneath the Australian plate to the east of North Island. And hence, North Island will be laced with volcanic features. Morning, Sashank morning dare i say because this is the first time you and me are meeting so officially morning unofficially good evening okay between the south island and the subduction zone basically you have which boundary you have the transform boundary here there is no subduction of pacific plate underneath the australian plate here the pacific plate and the australian plate they are just slipping past one another creating which fault the alpine fault whereas as you move to the southwards of the southern island as you move towards southwest again you will have convergent boundary so in new zealand the convergent boundary is to the north of east to the east of north island and to the south of the southern island just plainly remember this and because of this the northern island is tectonically more active whereas the southern island is tectonically stable whereas the southern island is tectonically stable 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 as compared to northern island mind you this is as comparison to northern island it does not mean that the southern island will not have earthquake you did have a major earthquake in christchurch okay so please understand this very very properly so this is with regards to the plate tectonics and because of this the northern island will have various volcanic features because of this the northern island will be less with volcanic features like craters like calderas active volcanoes dormant volcanoes you will also have extinct volcanoes okay now as we are clear with the tectonics of new zealand let us try to understand the water bodies around new zealand so everyone please keep a pen and paper ready with you those of you who are having atlas with you you can easily mark up the entries rest you can take a pen and paper and you can jot down 
and for this i will be zooming in on each of the different locations so for discussing the water bodies again we will move from west to east so please bear with me as i discuss the water bodies around new zealand and water bodies will include important straits important oceans important bights bays gulfs okay so let's start so to the west of new zealand this complete water body this is called as tasman sea this is called as tasman sea so basically tasman sea separates australia and new zealand so this complete separation between australia and new zealand this is called as tasman sea to the east of new zealand over here you have the pacific ocean you have the pacific you have the pacific ocean okay you have the pacific you have the pacific ocean okay if i am showcasing you on a world map like this so you can get this very easily so let me use a 2d let me use a 3d part so that you understand it even more easily so this is australia and this is new zealand <clears throat> okay so this is australia and this is new zealand so the water body separating australia and new zealand this is called as tasman sea this is tasman sea and to the east of new zealand you have the pacific ocean please get this very very properly pacific ocean does not separate australia from new zealand it is the tasman sea which separates new zealand from australia okay so i hope this entry is clear to you let us now come back to the main map of new zealand so this is the tasman sea and this is the pacific ocean in the middle you have different kinds of water bodies so let us understand the individual water bodies again from west to east the beaches the important bays gulfs and bights so for this i will be zooming on on the locations so let me quickly zoom in on the different locations so that you get the water bodies too <coughs> okay so first of all i'll be focusing on the northern island so i'm zooming in on the northern island for everyone okay okay so if i consider the northernmost tip of northern island this is where you have cape regina the image of which i discussed with you in the beginning so the northernmost point of new zealand it is called as cape regina okay just besides cape regina this complete beach this complete beach is one of the longest beaches of the world one of the longest beaches it is called as 90 mile beach it is called as 90 it is called as 90 mile beach it is called as 90 mile beach very important location with regards to the northern island one of the longest sandy beaches of the world it is called as the 90 mile beach mind you the longest beach of the world is in brazil okay and one of the longest beaches of the world after brazil is in india okay so you have the 90 mile beach okay after that you have very two important bays okay one of the bays is this bay this is called as this is called as bay of island this is called as bay of thousand islands okay after this this particular location this is called as how rocky how rocky how rocky bay okay both of these locations are very important this is called as bay of thousand islands so you have small small thousand islands and after this you have how rocky bay why both of these locations are important i will tell you in a little bit amount of time because this is from this is where the new zealand was discovered okay very interesting tidbit okay after that you have one very important bay okay uh sorry my guy my uh, my bad guys this is not how rocky bay this is bay of island only i am correcting myself okay this is bay of islands only mind you this is bay of islands please get this very properly this is bay of islands and uh, this is bay of islands this is called as bay of thousand islands and this particular part okay this particular part of new zealand this complete gulf this is called as gulf of hauraki okay this is goes as gulf of hauraki 
आई एम करेक्टिंग माई सेल्फ दिस इज कॉल्ड एज गल्फ ऑफ हाउरा की आफ्टर दिस दिस कंप्लीट बे दिस इज कॉल्ड एज बे ऑफ प्लेंटी दिस इज कॉल्ड एज बे ऑफ प्लेंटी ओके दिस इज कॉल्ड एज बे ऑफ प्लेंटी आफ्टर दैट दिस पर्टिकुलर गल्फ दिस इज कॉल्ड एज पॉवर्टी बे दिस इज कॉल्ड एज पॉवर्टी बे एंड दिस पर्टिकुलर बे दिस इज कॉल्ड एज हॉक बे this is called as hawk bay okay i know this will be a little bit daunting for everyone to remember all this but once you practice this water body is on the map you will be pretty comfortable so you have 90 mile beach you have cape regina you have bay of thousand islands then you have hauraki gulf then you have bay of plenty then you have poverty bay and then you have hawk bay okay so you have bay you have gulf and you have the 90 mile beach okay the difference between bight bay gulf i will explain you in some point of time let's now move ahead so these are some of the important water bodies around the north island now i am moving into the south island and i am also venturing into the difference or into the strait which is very very important between the north island and south island so let us move down south <coughs> <clears throat> okay <clears throat> okay so the strait separating the strait separating the north island and south island this is one of the most important straits for new zealand okay so the strait separating the north island and south island this particular strait this particular strait is called as cook strait this particular strait is called as cook strait okay cook strait is named after the captain sir james cook james cook was the person who discovered new zealand okay and it's a very interesting story i will tell you just so hold on for a bit so the strait separating the north island and the south island this is called as cook strait okay very important strait for new zealand very important why because the capital city of new zealand is over here it is wellington i will discuss the name also uh abhay you are asking why it is named so is it no new zealand is no uh, no power like it's not poor okay and the bay of plenty is not also named after the plenty okay it's that these are the local locations okay poverty bay is named because like that area was basically from where the slaves were traded okay so you had this trading of slaves from that area in the ancient times so you had the slaves being brought from dutch areas to over here i will explain you so the name poverty bay okay so the strait separating north island and south island is basically the cook strait okay named after sir captain james cook the person who discovered new zealand after that if i move to the southern island so very important location over here this is called as banks peninsula this is called as banks peninsula this is called as banks peninsula and this particular location if you can see this smooth curvature along the coast very smooth curvature along the coast this is called as canterbury blight this is called as canterbury canterbury blight okay canterbury b i g h t this very smooth curvature this is called as canterbury bight and this very smooth curvature along the west coast of south island this is called as westland bight this is called as westland bight okay so what is bight guys bight is a very smooth curvature along the coastline so a very smooth curvature along the coastline is called as bight okay if you have a water body which is surrounded by land on three sides it will be called as gulf so if you have land on three sides it will be called as gulf so you have bombay and bay is bay is basically a water body bay difference between bight bay and gulf so bight is a very smooth curvature along the coastline that will be called as bight whereas bay will be a water body which is surrounded by land on three sides but it is not that enclosed whereas gulf will be a water body which is 
practically enclosed by land on three sides. So you have Bay of Bengal. So in India, the Bay of Bengal is surrounded by India, by Myanmar, by Bangladesh and by Indonesia. So it is surrounded by land on three sides, but its opening is very wide. Whereas a gulf will have a very narrow opening. But gulf will also be a water body which is surrounded by three sides. Whereas bight is a very smooth curvature along the coastline. So this is called as Westland Bight. This is called as Canterbury Bight. Okay, each of this location is very very important. Okay, why these locations are so important? I will teach you in short time. Okay, so you have Cook Strait, you have Banks Peninsula, you have Canterbury Bight, and you have Westland Bight. Okay, now let's move further southwards. The strait separating the strait separating. <coughs> <clears throat> okay so the strait separating the north island from the south island was called as cook strait now the strait separating the south island from the stewart island this is called as povox strait this is called as Poviox Strait. Please get this location very very properly. This is called as Poviox Strait. So the strait separating the South Island from the Stewart Island. This is called as Poviox Strait. Okay. So you have two straits in New Zealand. Very important. You have Cook Strait and you have Poviox Strait. You have Cook Strait and you have Poviox Strait. Okay. So let's again move to the west coast of New Zealand. <coughs> Okay, so if I am now zooming out, if I am again moving towards the North Island. Okay, so if I am zooming in again on the North Island for you, very two important bites. Okay, here you have a bite called as North Taranaki bite. You have North Taranaki bite. You have North Taranaki bite. And this bite it is called as South Taranaki. So you have North Taranaki and you have South Taranaki. Very two important bites. I am again reiterating guys, what is bites? Bite is the smooth curvature along the coastline. What is bay? Bay is a water body surrounded by land on three sides. But mind you that water body's opening is very wide. You can remember Bay of Bengal. Okay, whereas Gulf, Gulf is again a water body which is surrounded by land on three sides, but it is practically enclosed. So the opening is very, very narrow. And what is straight? Straight is a very small water body which is surrounded by land on two sides. So straight will have two opening, but it is a very narrow water body, very, very narrow water body. So as you can see, this straight cook straight surrounded by land on two sides, but very narrow. Whereas bite is very smooth curvature, see this curvature, this curvature and this curvature, North Taranaki bite and South Taranaki bite. So guys, these are the important water bodies and these are the important locations along the beaches and along the coastline of New Zealand. Now, let us move ahead. Let us move with regards to the discussion of the physical features of the North Island. So. If I'm discussing with you the physical features of North Island, so as I've already said, the North Island is more tectonic as compared to the South Island. So because of this, on the North Island, you have what? You have series of volcanic features. Okay, what are the series of volcanic features? Let us try to understand that. Okay, so if you see the map over here and if you see this location, in the middle of New Zealand, this location is one of the world's biggest caldera. What is caldera guys? Caldera is nothing but a big volcanic crater. But a big volcanic crater. So volcanic crater is basically a lake form when the volcano has exploded and now you have a depression being created and in that depression you have accumulation of water. So that is called as crater. A very big crater is called as caldera. So you have one of the world's biggest caldera on the northern island of New Zealand and the name of this caldera, this is called as Lake Taupo. This is called as Lake Taupo. 
please remember this name this is called as lake taupo another very important caldera you have in this part of new zealand this is called as lake rotorua this is called as lake rotorua guys each of this location is important why it is important i will tell you in little bit amount of time but now just remember that you have lake taupo and you have lake rotorua and both of these are volcanic calderas okay both of these are volcanic calderas very big volcanic craters and if you see this part so this part of new zealand is having volcanic peaks this part of new zealand is having volcanic peaks okay the names are not important now just remember that in the northern island you will have volcanic peaks and you will have the volcanic calderas two of them are important taupo and rotorua so with regards to new zealand north island this much is important now let us divert our attention to the south island because south island is where we will be venturing out into the details okay so let's move into the southern island now <clears throat> so if i am now considering the southern island <clears throat> so if you can see on the interactive flat panel guys the southern island of new zealand has got varied of features okay on the west coast of southern island because of alpine fault because of plate tectonics you have one very big range of fold mountains this is called as the southern alps this is called as the southern alps mind you the northern alps are in finland the alps are in switzerland and italy whereas the southern alps are in new zealand so southern alps are in new zealand the northern alps are in finland and the alps are in switzerland italy and little bit of southern of germany and the southern alps are in new zealand now as as i explained you in one of the classes now if you have a topography like this that you have oceans from where the winds are coming and if you have mountains acting as orographic barriers remember that new zealand is in the southern hemisphere it is outside the zone of tropics so it will be battered by the westerly winds so the westerly winds are striking the coast the southern coast of new zealand like this so now because of this what you will have on the orographic side of the southern alps you will have what you will have evergreen temperate rainforests i hope you remember this why because the westerlies will bring incessant rainfall and all of these westerlies will be stopped by the southern alps so southern alps will be acting as a orographic barrier so on the west coast of southern island on the west coast or on the orographic side of the southern alps you will have temperate evergreen rainforest and there i say you will also have mangroves you will also have mangroves very very important okay new zealand is one of the few locations of the world where in outside the tropical areas you find mangroves so mangroves are specialized forests mangroves are that kind of forest which can grow both in uh sweet water as well as salty water so they can grow in the sweet water of the rivers and they can grow in the salty waters of the oceans too okay so please understand this that you will also have mangroves on the southern coast of new zealand now as you come to the east part here you have series of glaciated lakes i will give you a name i will give the name in a little bit amount of time here you will have series of glaciated lakes all of these glaciated lakes are basically formed by the melting glaciers as we came out of the last ice age so the glaciers retreated and here you have series of glaciated lakes and now as we come to the leeward side of the mountains over here the rainfall will be very less so this part of new zealand will have grasslands this part of new zealand will have what this will have grassland so if you see this part of new zealand this is one of the most fertile regions of the world and this is one of the most important grasslands with regards to dairy industry and the name of this grassland is called as canterbury plains and it is one of the world's most richest zones for dairy industry so this is called as canterbury this is called as canterbury plains so please get this very very properly this will be called as canterbury plains so you have the southern alps you have the glaciated lakes 
to the east of that you will have canterbury plains and because of this the banks peninsula is so goddamn important why because banks peninsula will be heavily dependent on the exports of what on the exports of the dairy products over here uh, it's a very interesting story all the stories will come in just 5 to 10 minutes so just bear with me those who are watching with me so you have southern alps you have the glaciated lakes and then you have the canterbury plains and mind you this southern alps they are existing why because you are having a transform kind of boundary between the australian plate and pacific plate so you have upliftment of this fold mountain so this frictional forces has basically uplifted the landmass above and you have the formation of the southern alps okay northern island it is more tectonic it will be having volcanic features the southern island will be tectonically stable whereas the stewart island it's a basically a block which has come out of the southern island so it is completely continental okay it will not have any volcanic features it will not have any seismic features so the stewart island of new zealand is completely continental free devoid of earthquakes free devoid of any volcanic activity okay so as you are now comfortable in understanding this that on the west coast of new zealand you have dense temperate evergreen rainforest you have glaciated lakes after that and then you have canterbury plains these canterbury plains are the temperate grasslands of new zealand and because of the location because of the temperature these grasslands are heavily dominated by cattle rearing you have cattle rearing you also have cattle ranching and you also have agriculture okay new zealand is very famous for citrus fruits kiwi the national fruit of new zealand is kiwi okay so as you have got this much let us now go into the depths of it let us do then some of the names of the glaciated lakes which are important from prelims perspective okay so i am now discussing some of the glaciated lakes of new zealand please bear with me so that you get the names properly and then we can move ahead with the discussion of the political aspects so i am zooming in for a movement on the southern part on the southern <coughs> Let it refresh. Okay. So, I will be discussing some of the important glaciated lakes of New Zealand, which are also some of the biggest and deepest of the world. Okay. So, the first lake I am discussing with you all is this particular water body. Okay. This is called as Lake Tekapo. Lake Tekapo. One of the most beautiful locations on earth. And guys, if you ever get time, if you ever get the privilege of visiting any foreign country, please visit New Zealand. It's basically heaven on earth. No country I have seen up till today is so goddamn beautiful as New Zealand, especially Lake Tekapo. So it's my request that whenever you get time, whenever you have money to, because it will cost you a dime. So please visit the New Zealand Southern Island Lake Tekapo, one of the most beautiful locations you will see in your life. Okay. And basically, New Zealand government has maintained it. You cannot enter any water body. If you want to enter any water body, you have to basically seek the permission of the government. The New Zealand uh, of New Ze uh, the government of New Zealand is basically uh, very much uh, astute with regards to protecting the environment. Why? Because they say that people flock to our country for seeing this environment. And if we pollute this environment, how will we ensure tourism? So, New Zealand government is very, very focused on maintaining the environment and dare I say we should also do that. Okay. Uh, Vishal, thank you for the comment, knowledge with Nirvana. So, it's basically the knowledge of these locations. See guys, uh, why I am able to remember all these locations because I have a passion for this discipline. Okay. Once you visit these places, so once you visit Lake Tekapo, you can never forget the location because it's so goddamn beautiful. And it's my endeavor, guys, that using my knowledge, using my experience, I'm making you understand these locations too. So that you get good marks in prelims, you get good marks in mains, and you qualify with good All India rank. That is my ultimate endeavor. Things which I could not do in my preparation, I'm basically doing that for you. I don't want you to commit the same mistakes which I did because when we were preparing we didn't have such kind of interactive understanding we didn't have such interactive kind of coaching so it was very difficult to grasp all these locations hence i am able to use this and i am able to simplify this for you so it's my utmost privilege okay guys so let's move ahead so this is lake tekapo 
besides that you will have one of the most pristine lakes one of the most beautiful glaciated lakes of the world this is called as lake pukai below that you will have a lake called as lake havei this is called as lake havei after that the lake this is called as lake vanaka this is called as lake vanaka so i am basically giving you the names of 6 to 7 glaciated lakes of new zealand which are important after lake vanaka this is the longest lake of new zealand and one of the deepest lakes of the world please understand this this is one of the longest lakes of new zealand and one of the deepest lakes of the world after lake baikal so this is lake wakatipu this is lake wakatipu okay please get the name of this lake very properly this is lake wakatipu lake wakatipu is approximately 90 kilometers long and the average depth of lake wakatipu is more than 650 meters and in some places the depth of wakatipu does reach 1 kilometer so it is as deep as lake baikal okay and all of these are glaciated lakes and lastly this particular water body which you are seeing this is called as lake tiona this is called as lake tiona so i am again reiterating the water bodies for you i am again reiterating the lakes glaciated lakes of new zealand so you have lake tekapo you have lake pukai please remember this name guys lake pukai is one of the oldest and the most pristine glaciated lakes of the world and numerous research on climate change numerous researches on the uh, glaciated topography you have moraines uh you have the retreating of glaciers you have the glaciated valleys so numerous research are conducted in lake pukai so it is very much in news then you have lake havei mind you it's not lake huawei okay huawei is a electronics company of china then you have lake vanaka very beautiful lake then you have the longest lake of new zealand lake wakatipu roughly 90 kilometers long and one of the oldest sorry one of the deepest lakes of the world and then you have lake tiwana okay and so these are some of the important glaciated lakes of new zealand so i hope these entries are clear to you now let us move ahead and let us divert our attention towards the little bit of political aspects societal aspects economic aspects of new zealand now okay so as i told you that after this southern alps so here you will have mangroves this coast of new zealand this is called as haas coast very beautiful coastline of new zealand here you have mangroves here you have mangroves to the east of that you have the glaciated lakes over here you have canterbury plains over here you have canterbury plains and canterbury plains are basically the temperate grasslands of new zealand so three industries dominate this so what are the three industries number first you have agriculture and it is intensive agriculture number 2 you have cattle rearing you have cattle rearing cattle rearing is basically the rearing of cattle for milk and milk products and third industry that you have is basically cattle ranching cattle ranching is basically you are growing cattle for beef and beef products so you have cattle rearing cattle ranching and you have agriculture okay agriculture of new zealand like you don't have the food crops being grown in new zealand you have rather horticulture crops you have the crops like kiwi you have crops citrus fruits you have very much grown in kiwi and new zealand is known in the world for wine okay one of the most tastiest wines of the world both rich in taste and color because in wine taste and color both of them matter comes from this part of the world okay so this is very very important now let us delve into the discussion of the political aspects the societal aspects and the economic aspects of the new zealand for that i will be venturing into the political map so vishal abhay and sashank if you are watching me please comment me that whether you can see that image properly okay uh, it's a two way communication guys i appre i hope that you are getting the way i am teaching you so it's your uh, endeavor it's your feedback which matters to me a lot so now i'll be opening up the political map of new zealand after discussing the physical maps so please comment whether you are able to see this properly or not okay so now let me open the political map for you all <clears throat> okay so this is the political map of new zealand 
which I will now be using primarily for discussing of the cities for discussing of the important locations of New Zealand per se please uh, let me know that you are able to see this map properly uh, guys I'm deliberately using detailed maps of the world and this maps will improve as we get into more and more locations so I'll be using even more detailed maps so that you understand the issues here and here only okay so please comment whether you are able to see this map okay so political aspects of New Zealand economic aspects and the societal aspects so politically speaking New Zealand is a part of the Commonwealth okay the King Charles is the head of the government so New Zealand is a part of the British monarchy Australia and New Zealand are basically the two major uh, oceanic divisions of the British monarchy so the head of state of New Zealand is basically King Charles whose coronation happened on 7th of May uh, politically speaking New Zealand is having its own strategy own strategy in terms of fighting climate change in terms of immigration policies New Zealand has some of the most strict uh, strictest immigration policies no outside person can buy New Zealand buy land in New Zealand for that you need to have a residency permit you need to have the citizenship of New Zealand to buy land and New Zealand is one of the few countries in the world which does not have any packaging industry okay why because New Zealand government believes that in packaging industry you have pollution so majority of the imports of New Zealand are with regards to the packaged goods okay so all the packaged goods which you will find in New Zealand they are basically imported from the other countries so politically speaking the capital or the economic capital of New Zealand is this you have a city called as Auckland. Auckland is the New Zealand's most biggest city and it is the economic capital of New Zealand. Mind you, the entire population of New Zealand is just 48 to 49 lakhs. Okay, so it's a thing like what I can say, the population of New Zealand is just 48 to 49 lakhs. So in India, even if you have a road rage, you easily can accommodate 48 lakhs. So the entire population of New Zealand is just 48 lakhs. And out of that, 20 lakh reside in Auckland. So, roughly 40 to 50 percent of New Zealand's population resides in Auckland. So, what I can say, you can very easily get that. So, Auckland is the economic capital of New Zealand. Okay, it's the economic capital of New Zealand. The next city which you need to remember, this city is called as Wangari. Why this city is so then important? Because here you have the Bay of Islands. Here you have the Bay of Islands. So, Wangari is a very, very important city for New Zealand. Why? Because Captain James Cook entered New Zealand. Captain James Cook basically discovered New Zealand through Wangari. Okay. So, New Zealand was discovered in the year 1769 by Sir Captain James Cook. Okay. It was the year 1769 when Captain James Cook first landed in New Zealand. Historically, New Zealand was the place or New Zealand was the aboriginal land of a tribal group from Fiji, from a tribal group from Samoa called as Maori. Okay, so the original aborigines of New Zealand, they are called as Maori. Uh, just for your reference, those who are watching me, especially the boys, so you must be knowing a personality called as Ross Taylor. Okay, very able cricketer of New Zealand. So, Ross Taylor is basically a Maori person. So, if you see Ross Taylor's face, so it is oblong face, it is bulging. So, the original aborigines of New Zealand, the original tribal group of New Zealand are called as Maoris. So, the Maoris basically came from the Pacific Islands of Samoa and Fiji. So, they settled in New Zealand approximately in 800-900 AD. So, for sweet thousand years, New Zealand was not discovered okay rough scale so it was only in the year 1769 that Captain James Cook entered through New Zealand through Bay of Islands and the city called as Wangheri so this city is very very important because it opened up the doorway of New Zealand and the name New Zealand then the story behind this is even more interesting so Captain James Cook was a Dutch person so his name the name of Captain James Cook's house in Netherlands was Zeeland. Zeeland. Zeeland means enthusiasm. So, the name of his house in Dutch 
in the Netherlands was Zeeland. So as he discovered this new land, he named this land after his own house as New Zealand. Okay, so it was new home for him. It was New Zealand for him. Hence, he named this land as New Zealand. So very interesting story. It was the name of his house in the Netherlands as Zealand. So he named this new land as New Zealand. Okay, okay. So after Auckland, you have Wangiri, you have Bay of Islands. After that, very important city, you have a city called as Napier. Napier is a very important port city of New Zealand. In between Auckland and Napier, you have a city called as Hamilton. Okay, Hamilton is very important for sports. There is a very good cricket stadium over here. So very, very important for sports. And here you have a city called as Rotorua. Okay, so Rotorua is the cultural capital of New Zealand. Rotorua is the cultural capital of New Zealand. Okay, so I told you the Maoris of New Zealand were the local aborigines of New Zealand and today the Maoris they primarily reside in Rotorua region in the Northern Ireland. Hence, Rotorua is the cultural capital, Auckland is the economic capital, Wangheri is the region from where Captain James Cook entered into the New Zealand, Napier is a very important port city. So these are some of the important cities in this part. Now, if I go into the southern part of North Island, this is where you have the capital city of New Zealand, that is Wellington. Okay, so let's discuss Wellington too. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so this is where you have the capital city of New Zealand, you have Wellington. Okay. <clears throat> so this is where you have the capital city of New Zealand, located just at the mouths of the northern island and located on Cook Strait. So this is the capital city of New Zealand. Okay. Capital territory of New Zealand. And now as we move into the southern island, you have the most important city of New Zealand after Auckland. After Auckland, the most important city is Christchurch because Christchurch is from where you have majority of the agricultural exports and you have Christchurch as the educational capital of New Zealand. You have Christchurch as the educational capital of New Zealand. So big, big universities, big, big uh, exports. And guys, there is a company called as Francesca. You can just Google this company. I'm writing the name for you. It is called as Francesca. Okay. Francesca is a local company of New Zealand like Amul of India. Francesca globally dominates 30 to 35 percent of milk products in the entire freaking world. Just imagine the South Island, which is not even 300 kilometers east west, which is not even 500 kilometers north south, it is not even 300 kilometers east west, it is not even 500 kilometers north south. You have a company called as Francesca, and that company dominates 30 to 35 percent of the global market of milk and milk products. It's boinkers. So just imagine the scale on which this company must be functioning. And you know, there is a very interesting story that basically India was about to sign up RCEP, Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership with China, with Australia and New Zealand. And basically Amul of India opposed that. Why? Because Amul feared that if Francesca gets the inroads of Indian markets, if Francesca launches its products in India, it will practically half the price of milk in India. So the milk which you are now buying at 54, 56 liter, it will come down to 19, 20, 22 rupees a liter. So that was the fear of Amul, that it feared the company called as Francesca of New Zealand, that India did not sign up RCEP. Okay, so see how geopolitics plays. Such a small country, such a small southern island, but that southern island dominates the entire global stage in terms of milk and milk products. So guys, it's a example which you all should understand it's an example which you all should appreciate that size does not matter your vision your ideas your inputs matter so it's it, it will not matter how small steps you are taking in this preparation it's how much steps you take it's how consistent you are and how you build up your empire that matters okay so please take the geographical example of southern island with regards to this okay you have christchurch 
after that you have a city called as dunedin so i am just zooming in over here again so you have a city called as dunedin <clears throat> So Dunedin is on the southern part of Southern Ireland. This is where you have Dunedin. Okay. So Dunedin is again educational center and it is very important mining center of New Zealand because if you remember we discussed this part of New Zealand is a shield region and the shield region it is called as Otago Shield. So Dunedin is very important shield region for New Zealand. You have rare earth minerals being mined in this part of New Zealand so Dunedin becomes very very important now let us discuss the oh god you don't have that don't have one city over here Wanaka Conwell okay so this map is basically missing one of the most important cities of New Zealand so let me just work up the city for you okay this part of New Zealand it's good that they don't have this city so this part of New Zealand is where you have the sports capital of the entire world. So if you are a very adventure junkie, if you are very much interested in paragliding, bungee jumping, skydiving, so you should go to this part of New Zealand. Just besides Conven, you have the adventure sports capital of the world. It is called as Queenstown. It is called as Queenstown. So please remember this. You have the adventure sports capital of the world or this part of New Zealand called as Queenstown. So please remember this entry just besides Conwell you will be having Queenstown. So these are some of the important cities of New Zealand guys and uh, dare I say economy wise which industry dominates New Zealand. So milk industry, milk and milk produce industry dominates New Zealand. Then you have agriculture, agriculture primarily the horticulture crops. Then it comes to tourism. And lastly, you do have IT industry, you do have services industry, but services industry are primarily concentrated in Auckland. Auckland, the largest city of New Zealand, the economic capital of New Zealand. Okay. And I did kept I did keep one entry to be discussed in the last purposely because that is a very important entry and it was in news recently and another entry so for that i will be using the physical map of new zealand so please remember this entry this entry has the maximum propensity to be asked in your prelims so please get this entry very very properly okay so two years back you had a volcanic eruption in new zealand okay Two years back you had a volcanic eruption in New Zealand and that happened in the northern island that happened in the Bay of Plenty region okay so there was a volcano in Bay of Plenty okay so I deliberately kept the Bay of Plenty region eroded from you so over here you had one very active volcano the name of this volcano is Vaitari okay Vaitari or Vaikatiri, whatever name you have. So the name of the volcano in this part of New Zealand, it is called as Vaikatiri. This volcano basically exploded, it erupted and you had approximately 10 to 30 deaths in this part of the world. So Vaitari, please remember this word, UPSC is notorious for asking such kind of eruptions. So please remember Vaitari entry in the northern island where you have Bay of Plenty. Okay, Vaitari explosion and the last entry of New Zealand, the highest peak of New Zealand per se. So the highest peak of New Zealand is over here. Okay, it is in the southern island. <clears throat> so the highest peak of New Zealand is over here. It is called as Mount Cook. Okay, it is called as Mount Cook or it is called as Mount Auraki. Okay, Mount Cook named after Sir James Cook or it is called as Mount Auraki. If I am showcasing you on the political map, so you also have the peak over here. <clears throat> Mount Auraki or Mount Cook. Okay. So this is where you have Mount Auraki or Mount Cook. <clears throat> So this is Mount Auraki or Mount Cook. It is the tallest peak of New Zealand and tallest peak of Southern Alps. So please remember Mount Auraki or Mount Cook. 
ओके विशाल यू आर आस्किंग दैट वाई इंडिया डोंट टेक स्टेप बैक फ्रॉम इंडिया डिड टेक स्टेप बैक फ्रॉम आर सी पी इंडिया इज नॉट अ सिग्नेटरी टू आर सी ई पी ओके गाइज सो दिस सम्स अप न्यूजीलैंड फॉर अस आई होप दिस एंट्रीज वर क्लियर टू यू प्लीज रिमेंबर द एंट्रीज दैट वी डिस्कस द फिजिकल बॉडीज द वॉटर बॉडीज द ग्लेशियर्स ग्लेशियटेड लेक्स द कैपिटल सिटीज ऑफ न्यूजीलैंड इकोनॉमिक कैपिटल एजुकेशनल कैपिटल ओके वी डिड डिस्कस द अबोरिजन्स ऑफ न्यूजीलैंड द अबोरिजन्स ऑफ न्यूजीलैंड आर कॉल्ड एज माउरीज ओके सो टूडे द माउरीज आर बेसिकली लेफ्ट टू नदर्न आईलैंड एंड द नॉर्थ तारानाकी प्लेन्स एंड द साउथ तारानाकी प्लेन्स दिस इज कॉल्ड एज माउरी सेंचुअरी दिस इज कॉल्ड एज माउरी सेंचुअरी okay so here you have majority of the maori population and you have a city called as wangui so the name of the location it is called as wangui taranaki plains you don't need to go into that much details so just remember the name wangui taranaki plains from where you have the maoris of new zealand or you have the aborigines of new zealand today the aborigines are largely pushed into the northern island and mind you new zealand is the first country in the world to ban smoking so now any new adult in new zealand cannot buy cigarettes so see how progressive this country is how progressive this location is so guys on the behalf of study iq is english i extend my warmest regards to everyone i hope that this map of new zealand was clear to you i am always open for feedback i am always open for your suggestions the way we are moving the way we will move ahead so now our world tour has started now the next session will be on australia the next session will be on a detailed discussion of australia i am again reiterating my name my name is pritesh maturka okay you can reach out to me on telegram on a telegram channel called as geography by pritesh maturka for doing so you can just do a global search on telegram at geography by pritesh so wherein i keep on posting the relevant tidbits with regards to this discipline wherein i keep on posting the relevant current affairs and i have faith that you are all understanding with me guys none of this is relevant if you don't work upon the content so all the locations which i have discussed today all the places that i have discussed it's your responsibility now that you work upon this locations i have memorized this locations thousand times there i say i have been to most of this locations so for me it's just my experience sharing with you but now it's your humble responsibility that you are memorizing all these locations and it's my promise to you guys that whatever we are doing at least 15 to 20 marks will directly translate into prelims from this and at least 100 to 200 marks will directly translate it in mains so just have faith in me trust me we will move ahead okay so i take your leave today uh, i have abhay vishal i also have i guess sashank if you are listening to me i hope this session was enlightening to you so see you all in a short while next session will be with regards to australia so please keep a map ready with you of australia and mark up the locations and we will move ahead so adios thank you all everyone have a happy weekend please study hard and smart and please be consistent because that is what upsc demands from you okay so i take your leave have a happy